So let's talk about virtual backgrounds. If you don't have an NVIDIA card, if you are a noob like I am, and you don't want to be spending a ton of time and you see a whole lot of videos, and then you go and you try them out, and then you're not satisfied with the quality of what you see, like me, I am using or testing OBS, I'll show you in a moment. Uh, and I've seen the background removers. Now, if you have NVIDIA, I think it can work really well. I don't have that. I also don't have a green screen. So I want a virtual background approach. Now I found a tool, this one that uh, I am recording in right now, it does work, it does the best job, especially if you don't move around too much. It looks really good for a talking head video. Um, this could be really cool if you're recording something special. Like you can see, I put a pretend book cover in a poster behind me. Um, it's kind of cool, and I think it can work really well. Plus, it also this tool can record in high quality, which is a big deal. This is what I want. I've got a, a nice little OBSBOT, you know, 4K camera, and I want to be able to record in high quality. Uh, Google Meet or Zoom does a pretty good job of isolating and cutting out like we all know and love, uh, but the quality is not very high and I don't have the income to pay for something that high. So I'm going to use it. So we'll start with the easiest one, which is going to be using OBS and what that looks like. Then we're gonna go to the next one. And finally, I'll show you my favorite, but it's got its own drawbacks, which is this tool that I'm using right now. So the first thing that everybody talks about is using a background removal tool for OBS. Um, I honestly confess I was not very impressed. Uh, I followed a bunch of tutorials. Um, I won't, I'm not good enough to get into a lot of those, but I want to show you what I saw. And honestly, it felt like these people were making tutorial videos uh, and then basically expecting you not to actually accept how low quality things look. Now, again, if you have the NVIDIA card, which I don't, things might be better. If you don't have it like I don't, then um, this is this is the, the impact. This is what it can look like. So out the gate, it looks weird. It does weird things. It doesn't know what, you know, what's going on. So we hit advanced settings. I need to change it in my setting to CPU and then it isolates me. It does an okay-ish job. I mean, it's the kind of level and quality I'd expect maybe from a bad Zoom call or something like that. So uh, if I go ahead and I think I can change that to two and I'm going to increase the CPU thread so there's more processing. So you can see it's still uh, not looking really great around the edges. Um, Let's see, where is the thing? If we go enable threshold, here's where we have a little more control. Here's the sort of problem that I have. As you can see, there's there's a delay. Probably has to do with my processing speed. If I take threshold all the way up, yeah. So there is a processing delay. It could be that my computer is not fast enough or just how this tool works. In general, it's pretty good. If I were to stay like really still, then, you know, could probably get away with this. And also if you don't really have like long hair or I tie it back or something, then you won't see some of the feathering that's, that's sort of needed. Um, if I also blend the silhouette more, probably can look good. If I'm taking this and I'm crunching this down, you know, like uh, into the corner of a screen, as opposed to what I'm trying to do, which is like full screen. Also, by the way, see hands doesn't cut them out very well. I like to gesticulate when I'm talking. So I'm honestly not too wild about this. And you can now see a little more closely what it looks like. Um, it's not awful. It's not terrible. It's just not wonderful. And I want something that does look uh, better uh, is clearer, it's going to be a little stronger, but again, could get away with it. I just can't stand, like if I'm moving around, like I'm having a good time really talking to people, that sort of ghosting that, that goes around, it's just not good enough for what I'm looking for. So this is OBS. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll have a look at the, the next option. Okay, so this next option is using a tool that I actually, I love the design for how this software is put together. It's called Camo Studio. It's about eight bucks a month, eight ninety nine. It's uh, very pretty affordable. It works beautifully. I mean, I love how this thing works. It just it's so clean. It's neat. Um, and over on the right side, you get these image enhancements. Now you do need to pay for it. It doesn't let you access this unless you are doing it. So I sprung for the first eight. Um, and over here on the side, you can then add this effect where it's going to isolate you. There we go. I'm now isolated. And let's go ahead and select a background image. Let's pick something that I might get away with a little more easily. So as you can see, dark backgrounds are harder to work with. So let me change this uh, to scaled fit. Okay. So you can see now, uh, quality is pretty good. It's going to record in uh, a nice high quality. I've got it set to 1080p, as you can see over on the right, uh, 30 frames a second. Uh, I don't know, make it, make it, you know, high enough quality to where I would be, I would be happy with this. But downside is look at this, this white edge, and there are no settings anywhere to control this, to feather it, to reduce it, to take it in. So that's it. Now, what does work nicely is adding, let's say, a little bit of a blur. It can create a little bit of that bokeh look. Now, 
in my situation, if I had just, I've got an idea, I want to turn on the camera, I've just got a blank white wall and I'm looking for something that's, well, the idea was to create something with a little more visual interest. I even tried screenshotting my background and using Photoshop to generate like a, a hanging lamp or a, a standing plant or something. Now, as you can see also, this does a much better job of isolating hands and motion. Uh, you can see a little bit of the edge of, you know, the hair coming off my head here where it um, is applying a little bit of that effect to it. Quality looks great and uh, with like a little bit of a blur to create a little bit of that depth of field, this actually works really quite nicely. One little downside um, which can be easily fixed is the, there is an audio delay. Now again, this could be just my setup and I don't have, I'm running off a laptop here, relatively powerful one. It's not like these massive rigs that people use. So I had to mess around with until I figured out the audio delay so that recording with this um, works. Now again, um, I may want to, I don't know, let's say I'm recording an audiobook for for children or something or a novel that I've written. Um, I can't work with this. Uh, if I have like an epic dark background or something, I can't use this, unfortunately. Now, if I had a green screen and I was propping, you know, that in, which I don't, this might work better and it might be more accurate. And again, like I said, if you pick the right kind of background, you might almost get away with like a whole lot of this. Uh, like uh, against a, a light background or something that's really bright, you can probably barely tell anything and get away with it and stuff would look really good. Here we go, here's the last version. This one is using a tool called mm -hmm. And uh, I downloaded it because I was Googling for anything that would be free and do a, you know, a good quality thing. It seems a bit like Loom. It's a video tool that you can record. It's got a whole lot of bells and whistles. The only thing that I wanted to pay attention to is the virtual background. So it was free to download. Uh, it has provided the, the highest quality that I can see for how it's isolating. I think it might even be running stuff through the cloud. I'm not totally sure. But as you can see, I've got like a custom background that I have added here. So uh, let's see, if I were to change the background to something else, here's like a darker background. See how it's still got that little white outline. Now, if I'm really still, uh, it kind of goes away. Um, as I move around, it tracks pretty well with me. It's a lot better than OBS. It's a lot smaller than Camo. Um, and it's it hugs my outline a lot more closely. Hands are not as good as Camo, but then I don't know, I'll just, I would deal with that or keep it inside the frame or something like this. Now, again, if you use a lighter background, you're basically not going to see anything. You can get away with talking a whole bunch and moving around a whole lot. Whereas when it's on a darker background, at least for me and how my setup is, this is about as good as I can get. So if I were to upload, for example, a custom background, and I see I've got like a fake, you know, book cover here that I've thrown in. Um, the quality on this is good enough, I think, to where I'd be satisfied for like some kind of special recording. Now, the downsides sort of is, is after you record with this tool, it's going to upload it to the cloud and publish it as a link for you to share it, um, which is a little bit annoying because I would use this as, as a tool for uh, recording locally and then um, throwing into like ClipChamp and trimming stuff together or throwing up on YouTube. Uh, so every time that you use this, you have to finish recording it, uploads to the cloud, you wait for that to process, you download and then have to delete. So it adds extra features, even though it comes with a slightly better um, outlining. So I'll show you what that looks like. There you go. I'm adding a new picture and you can then apply and there it is. Um, it is also actually possible to resize. Obviously, the smaller you are, the higher quality you'll look and uh, you probably won't even notice the edging at all. And if I were for some reason to want to do something funny or cool like this, I guess it could work. It's control Z, let's put it back. Those are the options. So between OBS, uh, which is a tool that I just leave running all the time, use it as a virtual camera. Uh, I'm not totally wild on it. Um, Camo is just, it's really just nice. It just works beautifully, um, but it doesn't have the best edging. And then mm -hmm is uh, the cleanest edging, not as great on the hands uh, as Camo. Uh, and then it's got this uh, little extra stuff that it does. Camo, or sorry, mm -hmm runs for, I think it's about 12 bucks a month when I last checked. Um, so these are the three options. I'm curious if you have found other tools that you have uh, also tried. I did try X Split as another one, but I wasn't wild about how that worked. It didn't make my top three. So I'm curious what other tools that you have found that are basically free, if not like really low and affordable, and that work when you don't have an NVIDIA card um, so that you can get like an almost perfect look. I recognize you usually need a great rig and you probably need to pay for it. 
or just spring for it and have an awesome, you know, create an awesome setup. But there's times where you want something special. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments.